Your boy does love a good mouse. It's probably my absolute favorite peripheral, especially to review, and especially those that are made for a specific niche. Good afternoon, morning. welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm recently four piece warranty, Wookie Triple XL. And we have the XM2 WE Wireless Edition from in game gear on deck today. And it is a 63 gram full wireless, no RGB necessary type of product. This is completely purpose built for the FPS and MOBA gamer. And it's as well purpose built for those that like an ambidextrous but claw grip design. It's very unique in that facet. It does look quite similar in certain terms to other masks, but you'll see when we get into the shape that it is specifically made for the claw grip user. So let's start off with what's in the box. You obviously get a mouse, you get a very nice little connecting block, and then a USB dongle. You also get a very nice braided cable that has, as you'll see with the close up, a little bit of a different design. It's got an angular type of shape so that the cable goes up out of the mouse and doesn't drag along the mouse pad, which is a very nice little touch. The mouse itself at the front has a tunnel that is specifically shaped for that as well to further enhance that effect and make sure that your cable basically then sits upwards into a mouse bungee. You won't be using it very often, however, because the 63 gram product without its RGB has an incredibly good battery life. I average it to about 15% a day, and I'm a very heavy user. You could say 10 to 12 hours between work and play for me per day on the PC. So very high usage, it only used about 15% a day, which is absolutely fantastic. Moving around the bottom of the mouse, you're gonna see two really big feet, and then the sensor hole being covered by its own little skate there as well, and they are very, very nice and glidey. On the bottom right, you'll see the on off button and then the mode switch. The mode switch actually physically doesn't work unless the mouse is connected. So if you can't switch your mode, you've probably got a connection problem. And it's got a little indicator LED sneakily hidden in the front right over there. So you won't be able to see it too easily. On the left hand side of the mouse, we've got the in game gear logo nicely done over there with two absolutely perfectly placed thumb buttons. And then on the right hand side, you can see more of the same just without the thumb buttons. The scroll and the main buttons up top here don't have any grooves in them, so it does give a very flat sort of feeling. And in generally, all of the surfaces just kind of bow outwards slightly like that. The central hump is something that is very, well, why I say that this is a very claw specific product, because if I look at it next to the MX518, you can see how, how low it is compared to uh, a mouse of yesteryear. I think a lot of us have seen MX518s, which is why I keep it around so that I could show that to you guys. Then we get to the software, which is very simple and straightforward. There's absolutely nothing in it that uh, is sort of clunky or anything like that. It's got lift off distance modification, which I know is important to some of us. So it does have that built into it. You're going to have four different DPI levels, which you can then change. It doesn't really have a macro editor, however. So it's got a three button input, sort of, as I said, macro editor inverted commas, where you can do your different key presses simultaneously, and then include shift and control and the yeah, alt or you know, other keyboard functions as well with it. And that's really the extent of its macro ability. That's why I say this is seemingly specifically angled towards the FPS and mobile gamer. And there's more of that angling with the sensor. It's the Pixar 3370, which is a good solid 400 IPS 50G accelerating sensor with a 19,000 DPI max limit. Most of us that do FPS gaming, I would say in a range of what, between four and maybe 2,000 DPI on the higher end. So it's got more than enough DPI for that. And especially if you want to use it for 4K or 2K gaming, it is nicer, especially on the 4Ks, to have that higher uh, DPI so that you can cover your extreme amounts of resolution. Overall, I mean, it just, feels like there's almost nothing in your hand when you are using this. And the performance that I got from the sensor was absolutely exceptional. I really enjoy playing CS on these mouse, even the XM1R, which I did review um, back in the DAW, as it were, like over a year ago. It, for FPS gaming, the sensor is perfect. The KL switches also feel really good. They got a bit of a weird audio, which I'll show you quickly. 
It almost feels hollow in a way. It almost sounds like that as well. It does have quite a snappy click back and they do sound different for each button. But because of its claw nature, because that's its design, they've gone for that uni body button kind of design. So if you claw all the way top at the back, you can still click even right at the front of the mouse like that. So it really is made for the claw user. And I felt that when I played Dota, I actually got like a little bit of carpal tunnel vibes because I have to spam right click a lot for my movement. So yeah, it didn't really work for me personally in a MOBA sense, but you can see with the clips from CS, there was absolutely no problems hitting shots, even at 34 with gray hair, your boy's still out here. So you might have noticed during this review, this shares basically spec for spec beside the, sh the shape with very high end mass that cost like five, six, seven hundred rand more. So the price versus performance on this is absolutely exceptional. I love the white and black design. It gives me a very Stormtrooper kind of vibe. And it gives you an inherent excuse. If you do miss your shots, you can just be like, well, I'm a Stormtrooper. I'm not supposed to hit the shots. So we love that, obviously. But in all seriousness, the feet coverage is perfect. Using this was a pleasure. Like I say, FPS gaming, this is basically all I've used since Monday now being Thursday. So yeah, it's done an incredibly good job with that. Battery life is exceptional. I love that there's no RGB. Please, mouse manufacturers, nobody needs RGB on their mouse anymore these days. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm in that boat. It doesn't give you extra FPS. And honestly, this gives you extra aim because it's got a good sensor in it. Good battery, good build quality. The finish is, I love that. Um, it's very smooth and kind of glidey. It doesn't have a textured sort of finish, which another friend, basically stopped using a very expensive mouse just because of the finish that was on it. So yeah, maybe that's important to you. This is very smooth. It's a matte kind of finish on it. And yeah, just look for your performance. Everything has really been knocked out of the park. And that price point, thank you, Indian Gear. Thank you for not adding unnecessary tax to the process. Anywho, that is all I've got for you on the XM2 WE from Endgame Gear. If you have enjoyed this, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe. And I will see you on the flip side. Oh,